Marvel Studios has confirmed that there is indeed going to be a Thor 5, and it has been confirmed that Taika Waititi, who directed Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder, will not be returning to helm Thor 5. So for those who didn't like the direction of Thor Love and Thunder, Taika Waititi is not coming back. Plus, Chris Hemsworth himself said that yes, he would love to return as Thor, however, it would have to be very different than Thor Love and Thunder. He doesn't want the tone to be anything like Thor Love and Thunder. So if we are talking the opposite tone of Thor Love and Thunder, which was basically very silly, we are expecting a mature, serious vibe for Thor 5. So serious that Thor might actually die. And if he does, this is actually the perfect opportunity for Marvel Studios to tell a story about Thor from the comics that I have been wanting them to tell for a very long time time because this story does involve the death of Thor. Now, of course, the MCU always differs from the comics, but everything that is set up right now with the multiverse saga and Loki being the Yggdrasil tree right now holding everything together, Thor 5 has the potential to be an amazing movie and it could reunite Loki and Thor, which I know we've all been waiting for. We can't wait to see Thor reunite with Loki to see how far his brother has come since he first fought him in the first Avengers film, albeit it is a different variant of him, but still, you know Thor would be super proud. And thanks to insider Alex P at the Cosmic Circus, it looks like we know a little bit about what Thor 5 could actually be about, thanks to a recent discovery that he has made. So let's dive into this new discovery connected to Loki in Thor 5 and how it means Thor might actually die in the film. Also, announcement, I started a separate channel where I'm going to be discussing other topics of pop culture outside of Marvel. There's going to be a lot of cool discussions about a lot of cool topics, so I'd love it if you checked it out and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you love Marvel, subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date on the MCU. We're also giving away a PS5 and Xbox Series X. We'll talk more about that at the end. So insider Alex Perez from thecosmiccircus.com just released an article talking about a discovery they made in Thor Love and Thunder and how it ties into the multiverse saga and the upcoming Thor 5. I'm not going to read the entire article verbatim, so I definitely encourage you to go check out this article on the site. I will link it in the pinned comment down below. But in his article, he states, as one of these subheadlines, the sacred timeline appears in Thor Love and Thunder. In the post credit scene for Thor Love and Thunder, we see Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, aka the Mighty Thor, appear in Valhalla. She is greeted by Heimdall. He thanks her for protecting his son throughout the movie, and he welcomes her to Valhalla, the Asgardian afterlife. Alex points out that this scene may seem pretty straightforward. However, after he further inspects it, it holds what appears to be a massive clue that carries many implications moving forward, not only for Thor and the Thor franchise, but the MCU overall and specifically the multiverse saga that we are in right now. Alex Perez states, just as the scene starts, if you pause and look beyond the horizon and towards the sky, you'll notice the unwoven threads of the multiverse in the background. The appearance of these timelines implies several things about Valhalla and serves as a stepping point for new theories down the line. And here's the big part. He states that their sources confirmed that part of the early ideas of the forthcoming Thor 5 film involved Valhalla as one of the upcoming locations, exploring another aspect of Norse mythology. And if you take a look at the pictures right here, you can certainly see in the background, it does indeed seem to be the sacred timeline with timelines branching out. He then goes on to talk about how we could probably infer that Valhalla does exist outside of the known multiverse, much like other places in the MCU do as well, like the Quantum Realm, the Duat and the Field of Reeds, and the Ancestral Plane from Wakanda. So since the Cosmic Circus's source has confirmed that Valhalla is going to be one of the major upcoming locations of Thor 5 and they are going to explore this other aspect of Norse mythology in the movie, one could assume that Thor might end up in Valhalla. And if that is the case, that means that Thor has to die. Because as far as we know, that's the only way to get to Valhalla. Now, this is going to sound rather weird, but I have always wanted Thor to die in the MCU because I have always wanted him to become Rune King Thor. I've mentioned this over the years in a few videos I've done, how I thought that Rune King Thor would be amazing, but is probably too OP to have in the MCU. However, now I think it might be the perfect opportunity to bring him in when you consider how strong the Council of Kings are, or if the Beyonder is going to be the main villain, if you think about how strong the Beyonder is, we definitely need kind of a cosmic 
entity Thor. In Thor Disassembled in the comics, we see Thor return to Asgard to save his home from Ragnarok, which is being led by Loki. When he gets there, most of his home and his people have been taken out already, and there's only a few people left, like his brother, Baldur the Brave, Valkyrie, and some close allies. So he defeats Fenris and Durok in Vanaheim, and then he encounters the spirit of a boy who offers him the chance to gain a tremendous power. However, this comes at a tremendous cost. The ghost reveals that he can give him Odin's powers so Thor can become an even greater god. The young boy spirit further tells him that he can become the Allfather, leading Thor to pluck both of his eyes out and drop them in the Well of Mimir. Then, after drinking some of the water from the well, Thor is able to look and see into the past, and he learns of Ragnarok. However, he learns that in order to complete his quest and gain the Odin power, he will need to die and be reborn. And that is exactly what he does, and Thor ends up in Hell, tormented by Hela, but then he gets rescued by Odin's spirit. Then he learns about these entities called those who sit above in shadow, and they feed off of the endless cycle of Ragnarok, and that's where Thor realizes that he needs to stop the cycle of death and rebirth for good. And that's exactly what he does. He returns as Rune King Thor. He defeats basically everybody. However, the Yggdrasil tree fails and Ragnarok occurs and everything is destroyed. Then Thor basically stands alone as an eternity-like being and begins his slumber of the gods. Basically, Thor sacrifices himself to save his people. This version of Thor is by far one of the most powerful versions of Thor to ever exist. He essentially becomes a cosmic entity, and I think that is where we could be heading in the MCU. Especially if you consider that Loki is essentially the Yggdrasil tree right now. And since the end of Loki season 2, since we saw Loki become the Yggdrasil tree, insiders have been stating that Loki and Thor are going to reunite again, and Loki will indeed be in Avengers Secret Wars. Plus, we have reports of the soft reboot coming after Secret Wars. And if we think about how everything is going to happen in Secret Wars, the multiverse is essentially going to have to be destroyed, which means Loki is not going to be holding down the multiverse anymore. So eventually, Loki will kind of be free of being the Yggdrasil tree. So what I believe could happen in Thor 5 is that Thor could go up against Hercules, and he could lose and he might actually die and whether he chooses to or doesn't choose to one way or another it looks like he's going to end up in Valhalla and from there that's really where a bigger purpose for Thor comes into play that's probably where he's going to notice the sacred timeline and really the multiverse and they could even realize that it's Loki that is holding everything together in Norse mythology those who were in Valhalla were basically on standby for Ragnarok now obviously since we have had Thor Ragnarok in the MCU, Ragnarok in the MCU is very different than the Norse mythology Ragnarok. But Alex Perez in this article makes a very good point, stating that Ragnarok in the MCU could basically be the multiversal war and the multiverse falling apart. So the multiverse being destroyed, or Ragnarok, could be where Thor has to step in. Now as an even greater being, an ascended as guardian. And I also think this would be a great way to kind of move past the old plot that was set up in Thor Love and Thunder while also keeping some of the major key aspects and important aspects of that film, like Valhalla. But as far as the Zeus and Hercules thing goes, I think it's going to be really cool to see Hercules and Thor fight each other, but they can move past that plot because a lot of people thought that it was kind of tacky. The gods weren't really depicted how a lot of people thought they were going to be depicted. Plus, Thor, if he dies and goes to Valhalla, will most likely see... Odin and Jane Foster and his mother and the Warriors 3. It'll be a really cool reunion if this indeed does happen in Thor 5. And it would definitely make Thor have a much greater cause in the MCU. And if you especially consider the fact that Chris Hemsworth is most likely done playing Thor after Avengers Secret Wars, it would be really nice to see his character Thor have an extremely important role to play in Avengers Secret Wars with Thor 5 leading up to it, connecting him and Loki together. Let's face it, there are going to be a ton of different characters in Avengers Secret Wars, and there's a lot of characters in the MCU right now, just in general. So it would be nice to see Thor kind of shine above and beyond as an OG character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So that's what we've learned about Thor 5 so far, and those are my thoughts about what Marvel could possibly do to introduce a super, extremely powerful version of Thor, who is also a lot more mature and a lot more serious. I mean, if you wanted a more serious story for Thor 5, him plucking his eyes out and 
and dying, that's pretty serious. But let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And if you subscribe and leave a comment, you're automatically entered in our giveaway for a chance to win a PS5, an Xbox Series X, some Marvel Legends items, and some DC items as well. The winner gets to pick one item, and we pick one winner at the end of each month. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter, and as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.